there but welcome back to another toll tutorial sorry there's been a little pause I've had some surgery on my foot it's nothing too major but it's going to require a couple of months of rehabilitation so these uh, might be spaced out a little farther than usual but uh, glad to be back with this one so that was a three-quarter speed play along with the uh, second section of uh, Baker Street Muse uh, I'm not really going to go over the electric guitar portion. There's some crazy changes in that and uh, two uh, guitars overdubbed. Martin Barr did two lead guitars overdubbed in that section as well. Uh, so if you're playing this acoustically, you know, realistically, you're not going to, on your own, you're not going to be playing that electric portion. You'll probably just skip right on to the pig meat and the whore, which is the next section. And then that little instrumental thing that I, is just one of the reasons that I love Tull so much. It's so melodic and so unusual, the changes. Uh, but I'm going to show you those. 
All right, so let's start off with the pygmy and the whore. Now, this is probably the easiest, well, it is the easiest part of the whole song because it's mostly uh, just a C chord. Oh, I'm capoed on the second fret, by the way. But it's mostly a G chord, C chord, F sus2 chord, a D chord thrown in there every now and then. Um, but once again, he does some uh, tricky rhythmic things to throw us off. Uh, and I'll explain those. So here we go. So when it comes out of the electric part, the guitar part starts on that G power chord. Now when I get to the C chord, I'm playing the C chord as I see him almost always play it with the bass note down here with the fifth in the bass. Uh, the majority of the times he plays the C chord, he plays it like this. Sometimes he plays it like this, just the ordinary C chord. So I'm not sure what he's doing here, but I'm going to go ahead and play the C chord most of the times with the fifth in the bass. All right, so you hear the rhythm of that? So those are the first few opening chords. And then he's going to pause for a second. There's a little bit of air there before he goes back right when he starts singing, when he goes to the F sus2 chord again. So there's a little pause there. Big bottle from the line, put your weight on me. All right, now he's already going to throw us off here because the rhythm is going to change. Uh, so when I play this, I just choose one or the other. I don't do both because it's too much to think about for me. It's not too much for Ian to think about, but it is too much for me. So my recommendation would be just to stick with one of the rhythms that he does. And I'll show you the two rhythms that he does now. Big bottle from okay, that's the first rhythm. And that's the one he does most of the time. So I think that's the easiest one for me to do. Big bottle from put your weight on me. So, but on the record, what he does is he de changes the rhythm there and listen to it. Put your weight on me. I gotta gear my mind for it because it, it changes. Let's see. Big bottle from put your weight on me. All right, so you can hear that rhythm change from two. I got, I got to It just messes, trips me up every time. So you hear how that's different from. So, yeah, that's the one I do instead of with that little pause. But if you listen to the record carefully, he's mixing the rhythm up there. So choose one or the other would be my recommendation. But I'll, I'll try to do it and sing it at the same time, but I'm not sure I can get it. And then he comes back with that other.
All right, and then when the band comes in here, he goes back to that other rhythm. But only for this verse. And then the next verse, when it comes around again, he goes back. So I know that's a trivial difference, but once again, if you're a per perfectionist like I am and want to get every strum as close as you can, then uh, that's the change in the rhythm. But once again, when I'm playing it on my own just around the house or out, uh, I only do the... because that's just the easiest and most consistent way to do it. Yeah, and then he's going to the D chord and the C chord, you know. Testicle testing, wallet ever bulging. Dress to the left, divulging. The wrinkles of the years, winning atmospheres, shedding bell and tears in the pocket of a resistance. Shadows as he comes, as my rider slowly turns me. Okay, now, and to finish this uh, section, he's gonna go into the. It's kind of a quick change there from a C, uh, from a G, D to C. Into the, into the Marley Bongo. Terrible singing there. This song's too high for me anyway. Every song's too high for me. Into the Marleybone Road. Into the Marleybone Road. Into the Marleybone Road. So that's how he ends that section. To the All right, and then comes the instrumental part. Once again, what I love about Ian's writing, his melodic sense, and this embodies everything that I love about Toll, that you know they're going with this kind of heavy section, and then all of a sudden there's this beautiful little instrumental interlude between the next section. So in this uh, next section, what is interesting, if you listen very carefully, the guitar, the acoustic guitar is supporting the melody in harmony. It's not playing the main theme. And uh, if once again, it, it might sound a little different the way I played it from what you hear on the record, but once again, listen very carefully to what the acoustic guitar is doing, and it's supporting the melody. So the main melody is this. flub there but that's the main melody that's going along and the once again the acoustic guitar is going to be provi providing harmony for that so it starts on this E chord and by the way at the end of this I'm going to ins instead of showing you just only what he's playing on the acoustic guitar I'm going to show you what I do when I play it solo because I do incorporate the main melody when I'm just playing this on my own uh, but I'm going to show you both Ian's guitar part and then I'm going to show you the way to do it if you want to play the main melody on its own. Alright, so it starts on an E chord and so Ian's part goes and this, what I'm doing here is I'm playing an E suspended chord 
but I'm just playing the lower section of it. So I'm just barring with my fingers. That's the easiest way for me to get to this part. Up to the B string. Except when you get down to this note, you're playing the whole suspended E chord. All, all on the G string there. And then this next part goes. Now what I do is I fret the E chord, reach out with my pinky to hit that note. And then he plays an E power chord. Hits the E string open, the top E string open. Only plays the lower four strings. Get in a little better tune here. So he plays the E power chord. Open E string, and then he's playing the middle. Uh, he's playing the D string, G string, and the B string fretted here, which I guess is part of a G power chord. But he's just playing the three strings. So putting that all together. So what are we doing there? We're, um, once we play that G power chord, part of the G power chord, we're going to play the B string open, then our A string here, or the G string here, sorry. So we're just going down a scale from there. Finishing on the open A string, and then on the second fret. to there. Now when he gets to this E chord, he really only plays the bottom three strings. And then he takes his finger off the D string, plays it open. And then we're coming up to this A kind of, uh, we're only playing the A string, D string, and G string of the A chord and then just move that down two frets and then to finish the phrase we're gonna we're gonna play the B string open G string on the second fret and then back to the E major chord. And then we're gonna play that uh, same phrase on the, on the lower e, e chord.
repeats that whole So that little phrase is repeated twice. The main little uh, melody is repeated twice. All right, when he comes back up to this section at the end of this little interlude, he comes up and, and he's, he starts just by repeating the... And then the bass is going... I don't know a good way to throw that little section in, so I leave that out. I guess you could do it like that. And then transfer your melody up on the A chord. You're still playing an A chord, but instead of just the lower part, incorporate the B string in it now. Once again, the bass is doing that, but I just leave it out. I just go. I just keep strumming rather than doing the every time. And then, so there we're playing an A9 chord. We have that on the E string. And then we're uh, going down to this G9 chord over A. playing just the A chord, putting the melody note on top. And then when we do that, we're going to we're going to play that up here on the on the top E string. To end on the D chord. So that last part would go Of course it goes. So it's like, hey, slip by, and it goes into um, Crash Barrier Waltzer. And uh, we're going to take that up at a later time. Um, so that's, um, that is uh, the big me and the whore in that little musical interlude. So I told you that uh, I would show you, after I showed you Ian's part, I would show you how I play it when I'm playing it solo. Uh, because I do incorporate the main melody in there rather than just play Ian's part. Um, because it, you know, it sounds more like the record, really. All right, so we start on the E chord. And we start the melody, I start the melody down an octave lower than up here. So I'm just reaching up to hit the D string with my pinky. To that E sus2 chord, or E sus4, sorry. So that's the first part of the phrase, and then come up to the E string now. Open. Back to the E major chord. Alright, so we're... 
B string open. And then we're going to a F sharp minor chord. And then we're going to play just the lower three strings of the B chord. It's kind of a B sus2, but we're just going to play the lower part. And then go to this E power chord. And then this part is the same. So, you know, all that part's the same. So the only part I change is that first part. So see how I did that? It's kind of a fast change, but... So that's, that's how I do that. Now it does sound cool if on the B chord, uh, I don't always do this, but I think the bass on that little section plays a fifth in the bass on that B sus2 chord. So you're playing the lower part of a B power chord, and then you add the bass, the low E. So here, how it sounds pretty cool to go, pretty cool to go. Add the bass string. So that's it, and uh, till next time, uh, we will get to Crash Barrier Waltzer next, next time. See you later. Have a great day. Bye.